Hey brewers, welcome back to Iconoclast Brewing. Today we're talking about ALDC or Aceto Lactate Decarboxylase. If you've ever been looking forward to cracking open the fermenter, taking a sample, and then tasting that sample only to be thwarted by unexpected butter or butterscotch flavors, this video is for you. All right, so what am I drinking today? I'm drinking my Vienna Lager. This is my third attempt on a Vienna, and I think I finally got it. So I named this one Crayon Drawn Feet. This is a ode to my brew cat, Saz, who we lost about three months ago. Um, and it is delicious, so I'm loving it. It's It started out with the OG of 1051, finished at 1012, and has an ABV of about 5.1%. The IBUs are sitting at 23. And it is also, in this beer, you do have quite a bit of Vienna about five pounds of Munich one you have four pounds of Vienna four pounds of Chevalier heritage which is my first time using it and about a quarter pound of pale chocolate for color so a pretty interesting malt build there and as far as hops we have some nugget on the bittering side and some Hallertau Millefru on the five minute edition there I used 3470 for this one I actually pitched three packs in there it did really well and I fermented Actually right around 63 degrees. So that stuff you can take pretty high. I've had success fermenting even as high as 68 with 3470 and gotten a nice clean lager. So don't be afraid to experiment with that. If you'd like the recipe for this, let me know. I can share it. Happy to share. So a little about ALDC first. It's kind of in the name. So decarboxylase, it refers to the decarboxylation, which is a transformative chemical reaction where a molecule sheds a uh, carboxyl group and releases carbon dioxide. But we won't go too much deeper into that today. If you want to learn more about that, you can go to my blog. Or if you're interested, let me know and I'll do a deep dive video on it. So first, where is that butterscotch, that butter flavor coming from anyways? That's diacetyl. That is an off flavor and it is super common. It's one of the major off flavors you hear about and it's easily correctable by taking a couple different steps. There are different ways to deal with this. One is ALDC and one is a diacetyl rust, which is where you pretty much you're raising the fermentation temperature at the end of primary to let the yeast clean up those off flavors. Now, ALDC is very much a shortcut. It's something I use in all my beers. It's one of my secret weapons. So let me tell you about it. So let's talk a little more about diacetyl first before we go any further. Diacetyl is formed as a natural byproduct of yeast during fermentation. It's part of its metabolism cycle. So it originates from pyruvate, which becomes alpha acetolactate, which is an intermediate compound produced when yeast metabolizes sugars coming from malted barley. So diacetyl is an annoyance to all brewers, right? But why is it there in the first place? So like we said, it's, a, it's part of the metabolism of alpha acetolactate. And that is a precursor molecule as we talked about. So it's a key compound in the synthesis of branch chain amino acids, which are critical for yeast health, right? And viability, which is likely why many yeast strains produce them to begin with. So under certain conditions, this alpha acetolactate can and usually does undergo a molecular transformation. And that's where you get diacetyl from. Some yeast strains will produce more or less of this compound. So it really, there are a lot of variations that you have to worry about, including oxygen exposure, temperature, yeast strain, work composition, just tons of different things out there, which is why I turned to ALDC, because it's a surefire way to prevent the diacetyl in the first place. You can always do a de-rest. You can do a diacetyl rest. Raise your temperature up by five to eight degrees, something like that, to let the yeast work it out. But why add that much time to your, your fermentation cycle? I really don't see a reason to. This has cut my lager game down to about two to three weeks to get a nice, clean, clear lager. So I really can't recommend it enough. All right, so to use ALDC, it's actually really simple. You just need to check the instructions on the packaging for the specific ALDC you have. But for cellar science, the one I have, it says one dropper full per five gallons is sufficient. And that's what I always use and it works great. I had mine just before aerating and pitching yeast. And usually that happens alongside other enzymes like AMG or Clarity Firm if I'm using those at the same time. Like I said, this has improved my lager and ale turnaround time, but there's still some scenarios where you would not want to use ALDC. So why wouldn't you want to prevent diacetyl anyway? So here's the deal. Some styles actually benefit from having some diacetyl, and in those cases, it's not considered an off flavor, at least when it's in the right quantities. 
Diacetyl, while giving a butter flavor, can also contribute to mouthfeel and some styles like English bitters, Scottish ales, or traditional Czech pills. Yep, you heard that right. Traditional Czech pilsners can have a very subtle amount of diacetyl, but keep in mind the buttery character should be extremely restrained to the point that it is difficult to detect. The range of 0.05 to 0.1 parts per millionth is commonly referenced in brewing literature as the level at which diacetyl starts becoming perceptible, at least to those with a keen sense of taste. So it doesn't take much to add that butter flavor, wanted or not, in a beer. When you're trying to keep a touch of diacetyl around for those specific lagers and ales, I recommend forgoing ALDC altogether and instead perform a de-rest at about 8 degrees Fahrenheit higher than your primary fermentation temp and hold that until the diacetyl character is right where you want it. You can take samples like I do every 24 hours or so and then when you, you get that character you're looking for, start to cold crash just like we talked about. So reduce your temps about four degrees Fahrenheit every 12 hours until you reach 33 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't forget to add a little CO2 to your fermenter too if it's pressure capable before crashing because you don't want to implode the vessel. Now there is an optimal pH range for using ALD ALDC as well. Uh, Cellar Science, which is the brand I typically use, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. This is just the brand I've always used. I enjoy using this. It works really well for me, so I'm not going to change that right now. But they suggest a pH between 5.8 and 6.5, which shouldn't really be an issue for brewers because your pH should be much lower than that anyway, even during the mash being around 5.4. And then during fermentation, going into the fours, as you'd normally see. And if you're worried about this sticking around in your beer, I would not worry about it. It actually denatures once it gets to a lower pH. Uh, well before it hits a finished beer pH. So none of the dangers associated with it would be present at that point. So you're probably wondering, well, if it works between 5.8 and 6.5 and I'm mashing at 5.4, how can this even work? Well, the answer is because enzymes aren't just an on and off type mechanism. They're still active at lower and higher pHs, just not to the same degree. Now, eventually you would see it, like I said, denature, but that's way lower, 4.3, 4.4 pH, somewhere around there. That you would hit when it denatures so you really don't need to worry about that now it's worth mentioning there are some health risks if you ingest or inhale directly from the container here so aldc once it's in beer it's pretty harmless it does denature at a lower ph like we said however you do not want to inhale the fumes from this let me tell you right now i have done it it is not fun so what it does is it can trigger severe asthma symptoms it affects the lungs in weird ways this doesn't happen when you ingest it in a finished beer so I would not be concerned, but you do want to be careful when you're using it. So ALDC supposedly doesn't just remove diacetyl or prevent diacetyl rather, it supposedly will prevent hop creep. I don't believe this. I don't think this is true. After talking to a lot of pro brewers, they say it doesn't do that at all. It covers up some of the effects, but I would not use this to avoid hop creep. There are other measures you can use to avoid hop creep and look forward to an upcoming video on how to do that from everything from sourcing your hops correctly to other other solutions. While ALDC doesn't strictly prohibit or prevent hop creep itself, I would say that it produces it reduces the likelihood of any diacetyl being introduced at this time, which can happen during a refermentation, which is what hop creep is, right? It's where you add hops and the enzymes on the hops, the, the AMG and, and everything on there, as well as some simple sugars, by the way, cause a refermentation. So you're gonna dry out your beer. That's a whole nother conversation, but one of the byproducts of that refermentation is just another chance for diacetyl to be produced as a byproduct of the metabolism like we talked about. So adding ALDC when you're dry hopping can help prevent diacetyl at that stage as well. Uh, hopefully you found this really helpful. I know this was a lot of fun for me. So if you think that ALDC is for you, please feel free to use my link. Go buy it for more beer. It'll help us out and it won't cost you anything. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you want to learn more about this type of stuff. And also check out the link at the bottom if you want a deep dive on ALDC and how it works. I go way into the science, that's what I really like to do. So I wanna share that with you. If you wanna show support in other ways, you can visit iconoclassbrewing.com, check out the rest of my blog articles, or buy us a coffee there. See you in the next one and never stop learning.